You're going to need a whole salmon fillet to make this recipe. If you buy whole fillets, whole salmon fillets all the time and you haven't tried it yet, I recommend trying sockeye salmon. I tried it for the first time in this recipe and let me tell you man, sockeye salmon hits different. Let's get into the details of this recipe. Now sockeye salmon does have some small bones and you're gonna wanna take those out. I used some needle nose pliers and basically I just held the salmon down with one hand and just pull the bones straight across the fillet to take them out one at a time. The next thing we're gonna to need to do is remove the skin. Now, I did a quick search to find an easier way to make that happen, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. If you have access to one, it's good to use a flexible boning knife for this job. If you don't have a flexible boning knife or a boning knife of any kind, you probably get it done with a chef knife. I don't think that a serrated knife, like the steak knives and stuff like that. I don't think that's gonna get the job done for you. So the first thing we wanna do is cut off a small piece of meat from the corner. We're talking about the small corner of the filet. Just place your knife at a 45 degree angle, being careful to leave the skin on, and then just cut off a little piece of that meat. Next, I'm gonna use my knife to poke a hole in the skin for my finger. Basically, what we're doing is making a handle to make it easier to hold on to that slippery skin. What you wanna do next is place the sharp edge of your knife towards the meat. Hold it in place with the edge of the knife right on the counter or the cutting board, whatever you're, whatever you're cutting it on. Now we're not gonna be moving the knife at all. Instead, we're just gonna rock the skin back and forth, pulling it straight back while I'm keeping the knife still and pressed against the cutting board. Once you get about halfway or so, you can grab some more of that skin just to keep a good grip and just keep rocking it back and forth. Don't move the knife at all. Just keep rocking it back and forth and pulling it along until you cut all the way through. And that's it. You may have a little silver skin on the back, but it's not gonna be a problem. It's not something that you can't bite through or whatever. So now it's time to make the stuffing that we're gonna use in these salmon pinwheels. The stuffing I use today is made with some baby spinach, portobello mushroom and cream cheese. One mistake I did make was to put that Philly cream cheese in there in the skillet. Totally unnecessary. All you really need to do for the Philly cream cheese is just leave it on the counter. Just let it get nice and soft sitting on the counter. You really don't want to put it inside the skillet because then it's going to be too hot. You really want the consistency of your filling to be more like a paste. And putting it in the skillet like that made it really too loose and too runny. So I had to put it in the freezer for a while and let it firm up. All right, so now it's time to add the stuffing and start rolling this thing up.
All right, so I got my salmon all rolled up and everything. I got the cooking twine on there, but you see what I mean about that feeling, right? It got kind of messy a little bit. Even though I put it in the freezer, it didn't firm all the way up, but it's all good. I promise you, you wouldn't be watching this video if it hadn't turned out uh, amazing. So what I'm gonna do right now is just put these on a cooking rack, put them in the fridge and just let them cool while I fire up the grill. Even though I love, love, love me some smoked salmon, I'm not gonna be smoking them today. We are going hot and fast. So I'm gonna go out here and light up the grill. I'm gonna bank a whole chimney full of hot coals to one side, and then I'm gonna put my salmon on the other side. So let's get it going. Very important that you get these off the grill at 140 and it's not going to take long at this high temperature it starts to dry out very quickly after that so we're talking about 15 10 15 minutes at the most i'm going to come out here and check in 10 minutes um, but other than that i'm going to rely on my thermometer 